Hey guys, Peter over here, Craigless Hunter. It is, today is actually September 1st, uh, so August is right behind us, so it's time to make an update how we did in August. Um, it was a very, very good month, um, not as powerful for as money wise as July, but we still end up doing over 25 grand, um, which is phenomenal for August. Um, to be exact, we did uh, $26,671, uh, selling a little bit over 300 items. So last month, I think we sold 300. This year, uh, this month, we sold 305. Uh, so my average dropped a little bit. Um, the first half of the month was absolutely strong. The first two weeks uh, was right on target. We did about 15 grand. And then the second part of August was a little bit slower. And I strongly believe that's because of kids going back to school. You know, always those last two weeks, last time vacations and stuff like that. Um, but we still managed to do 26 grand, which was really, really good. But what I want to talk about in this episode, I want to show you guys a few items that, uh, that generate kind of extra money for me because I sell them. And what they are, they're just big bulky items. We probably did extra, I want to say six to seven thousand dollars because of selling these big uh, bulky items. And I understand a lot of people don't want to deal with this because it's just pain in the butt, right? To pack and ship and deal, you know, with the shipping and stuff. And a lot of people are scared of shipping, you know, big bulky items because they're worried that it might be losing some money uh, on shipping. I picked maybe here 13, 14 items that I want to show you guys that are super bulky, heavy, uh, but they generated such a good money. And, uh, and because you as a seller selling stuff like this, there's hardly any competition. Uh, not many people are willing to sell these, so it's a good opportunity to make some extra money uh, throughout the month in your store. So let's get into this and uh, let me show you what I picked for you guys so you can see what kind of items I'm talking about. All right, the first item that we have here, it's a vintage uh, Tiesco guitar, electric guitar. Um, this is from 1960s. They only made these guitars for a few years, made in Japan. We picked this up here in the shop. It came into our shop, paid 40 bucks for it, sold for 2.95 with a $30 shipping. But of course, guitars are big, right, and bulky. Um, hard to pack and stuff. Not really. Uh, I go all the time to Guitar Center. They put empty boxes for me on the side. Uh, I go there at least, you know, once a month and I pick up like five, six, sometimes ten boxes. Depends how many they put it away for me. And they're perfect, you know, um, for shipping guitars. And it's not a big deal at all. Um, you know, I sell a lot of musical instruments, especially guitars. This is something that you should go after uh, because there's a ton of musicians and they always look for new equipment. So it's a great opportunity to look into uh, musical instruments to, uh, and don't be scared of, of, you know, selling big bulky guitars, not at all. All right, here's another big bulky item. Um, and, and you guys seen my videos before, I sell the sewing machines all the time. Um, they're big, they're bulky, they're heavy, but people love buying them and not many people want to sell them because they're just bulky. Uh, this one came in also to the shop. We paid 35 bucks for this one. It was like in brand new condition, seriously. I mean, everything was still wrapped, excellent condition. I did actually lose a few dollars on this one on shipping. It did end up going to Seattle, Washington, which is like the farthest point, you know, from me. And I think the shipping on this was like 26 bucks, I wanna say. We had only $20 shipping on this, but still. So few dollars out of the final price went towards the shipping, not a big deal. Uh, but it shows you again, it's worth looking into this. They're good sellers all the time. Every month I sell two, three, sometimes even five sewing machines. Now here's a very cool item. Obviously super big and bulky, not heavy, okay? Because these seats tend to be very, very light, but just big bulky. This was probably, you know, 35 inches long, you know, foot and a half wide. 
Um, it's a Harley seat for motorcycle. I picked this up at the garage sale for 25 bucks uh, and sold right away too, 169.95. And I was kind of skeptical if it's gonna sell quickly because you know when you're coming towards the end of the season, it's harder to sell these. Uh, accessories for motorcycle I guess you know there's a ton of people still in Florida down south in California that ride bikes all year long but on this one we had $24.95 shipping uh, kind of had to double box this it had an original box to it but it was very flimsy so we put it in an additional box no problem quick seller um, and I find these motorcycle seats and different accessories at the garage sales all the time. You find them at flea markets as well. Good, good money makers. Of course, make sure that they are in a decent quality. No rips, no, you know, stains on them and stuff like that. Uh, guys who buy this stuff, you know, they, they want everything to be in very, very good condition. So this is always something good to look at super cool and interesting item right here um, it's a, it's a vintage you know a lighting fixture it's a lamp that these lamps used to hang outside and in front of you know garage or whatever it's just a very very cool piece I picked this up for 20 bucks in a garage sale lady wanted 30 bucks I offered 20 she took it now it did had a pipe on a bag that was probably about four and a half, five feet long. I trimmed that pipe to only stick out about a foot out of the back of the lamp. You can see that pipe sticking out. That way it was a little bit easier to pack. So we cut it before we took pictures. Whoever's gonna get it, it's gonna change that pipe anyway. So very cool piece, sold very quickly. Probably took a few days to sell, $129.95 with a $25 shipping. And this actually went next door to Michigan uh, and the shipping only ended up to be like 11 or 12 bucks even though that this was bulky but this is another example of uh, of doing big stuff don't be scared you know and stuff like this sells really really good people are really into this vintage lighting stuff you know they love to put them in a um, in these lofts you know and commercial finishes kind of like are on top right now meaning you know people love looking for those weird unusual things that they can put it in their house it's like a conversation piece in their house so these always sell good uh, but once again it is big and bulky uh, but you have a lot, lot less competition I keep saying that Here's a very cool item. I actually bought 10 different fishing rods from this guy. Um, made a bundle with him, all quality brand names, quality rods. And these are all one piece rods, so they're a little bit harder to ship. Now this particular one here, it's a St. Croix Legend. It's kind of top of the line what St. Croix makes. Uh, this rod new can range anywhere from three to $400, depending on the model. Um, I picked up 10 rods for $300 from this guy, so about $30 per rod. Some of them are gonna sell in this range. There was three St. Croix rods. There's a couple Fenwick, Daiwa. Um, I think a couple, um, couple Shimano and some other stuff. But anyway, it came out to about 30 bucks per rod. Now the way I shipped fishing rods, especially when they're one piece, like this one is a seven footer, you can go on Uline and buy the tubes, the three inch tubes, uh, and they're like three bucks a piece, they're eight footers, but I had problems with those before. They're not super durable, so I tend to just go to Lowe's or Home Depot or any you know local um, home improvement store and buy the two inch PVC pipes. Um, I buy them in 10 foot lengths then I can cut them to whatever length I need it and this one I would cut at seven and a half feet so it has a little bit of room on each side and they're so durable yes they are a little bit heavier but they're only like 349 per tube it's only like 50 cents more than the tube from Uline that it's made out of cardboard um, this one I decided to put on auction St. Croix is a very sought after brand um, and I sold St. Croix rods before. They tend to generate a lot of buzz when you put them on auction. A lot of people you know, are interested. Not many guys are selling these, period, because they tend to hold on to them. So if, if, if St. Croix comes up on a market, 
as you can see, 38 bids on this one. I had $20 shipping. Um, I sent it FedEx and I think it was like 17 bucks and it went a couple states over. I think this rod went to Minnesota. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. If you ever guys decide to sell fishing rods, that's the way to do it. Go ahead, go to home improvement store, buy a tube, a uh, two inch tube, and any rod will fit in there. And, uh, and you you're gonna have absolutely no problems. They can drop this tube, they can step on it, whatever, and it's gonna hold, um, and customer will get this with no problem. So if you ever decide to sell fishing rods, you know, there's definitely money in them and the way to ship them, it's not even that expensive, you know, so. All right, here we got super big, heavy and bulky item. Um, it's a cork keyboard piano synthesizer. I sell quite a few of these. Um, and the same approach on this one, I go to Guitar Center and I get empty boxes from them for the keyboards that they sell and then they basically discard uh, the boxes. So I always have few on hand. Now this one actually came into my shop. This was a brand new unit. The guy said he won this in some kind of raffle. Never used it. Um, the CD was still sealed. The instruction, everything was kind of still sealed except no original box to it. And I traded for another keyboard that I had in my shop that he wanted. Um, and that, when we made the trade, I ended up having $150 in this one after everything was done. So, um, it was a great pickup for me. This sold immediately as soon as we listed. It was gone, like, you know, right away. Um, shipping on this, $39.95. And it, that shipping just about covered. I think we actually paid like 41 or 42 bucks on it. Um, Again, bulky, heavy, not many people want to deal with these and ship, uh, but there's money in it. There's definitely money in it. And you can find a lot of keyboards when you guys are at garage sales and stuff. I run into them all the time. Yes, I know there's a lot of them cheaper ones out there, but any of them are gonna be big, heavy, and bulky. So it's worth picking them up because you know there's not much competition. Now this is probably one of the biggest and heaviest and bulkiest items that I shipped last month. Uh, it actually f took two of us to pack this. Um, this is a Delta Laid. Um, this was big, this was heavy. I mean, seriously, after we were done, I think I believe this was like 87 pounds. Um, and it took us probably a good half an hour to pack this, two of us. But we got it done. Uh, I had to go out and actually get some special big boxes. Of course free because, you know, you know me. I dumpster dive for my boxes. Um, but it was well worth it. We had a shipping on this of $60. I think the shipping was a little bit more. On this one, I think it went somewhere to Wyoming or Montana or something like that some kind of very lure area and FedEx I think charged us for this like 78 bucks so I end up paying a little bit extra on top of what we originally had which is no big deal because we picked this up for 80 bucks this came into my shop the guy was unloading just a bunch of different tools and we paid $80 for it, sold for $379. So if I gotta take a few dollars of the price to cover the shipping, no big deal whatsoever. But it just tells you I had zero competition. This sold like, I don't know, within a couple days, you know? Because nobody wants to ship this. Nobody wants to bother with packing big bulky items. But when you have no competition, things are selling. Here we got very cool, super interesting item that it actually came into my shop in Chicago and Ryan bought this. Bought this for a hundred bucks. There was a few of them available for sale but none of them were actually selling. Um, mainly because I think they were just local pickup. People not offering shipping on these. So anyway, we got this for a hundred bucks. I originally put this for like a super crazy price, like $1,500 or $2,000 or something like that. We had a lot of watches, a lot of views, but no bites. Um, so after a month, I decided I'm gonna put this on auction and see what happens. Um, and it ended up selling for $555 uh, with 19 bids and $50 shipping. Now here's the sad story what happened with this item. 
I double boxed it, I packed it super, I mean covered with styrofoam so it's safe for shipping and went international, I went to Kentucky through global shipping program and, and it turned out to be actually pretty cheap to ship it to Kentucky. Most of the items that I ship to Kentucky are relatively inexpensive because it's relatively close to me and I think we paid only like $17 in shipping. Um, when Kentucky got this, first we got an email from them that this item is on a delay, on a review, and uh, they'll let us know within a couple days what's happening with this. Well, two, two days go by, maybe three days go by, and we get an email that unfortunately, um, this item is too big, too bulky for global shipping program and they're not gonna ship it out to the customer. I don't have to worry about it. They refunded the money to the customer. I got my money, end of story. Well, the guy was actually very upset who bought this. He wanted, wanted really bad. He messaged me several times saying, can you somehow get it back from them? And I'll pay extra shipping, whatever it is, you know, just ship it, ship it to me on your, on your own. Uh, I'm like, I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I, I believe Global Shipping decides to destroy them, whatever happens with them, I don't get the item back. So it was a pretty sad story, but it tells you again, mine sold and the other ones were not selling because I did offer shipping on this, um, $49.95, and I'm sure the guy paid a lot more because it was, it was going to Amsterdam or somewhere in Europe. I don't remember exactly where, but... Uh, this is another cool item. This came into the shop and we got this really cheap. Uh, actually, I couldn't find anything on this or one of my guys couldn't find anything on this. And we bought this only like for 20 or 25 bucks. It's a, it's a scale for uh, weighing, you know, paint cans or the whole five gallon buckets and stuff. And these are tend to be very, very expensive, but they are also big, bulky and heavy and nobody wants to ship them. There's few of them, you know, for sale here and there, different brands, but everything is kind of local pickup. Um, and we decided to put it for $249 and sold very quickly with $20 shipping. I should have probably put a little bit more shipping on this as well. I think we paid a little bit more than 20 bucks. I can't tell you. I can't tell you right now how much was it exactly. I think Adrian packed this and I think it was, he mentioned to me that it was like 30 bucks to ship. So we underpriced it a little bit, but still, you know, for $25 investment, like I said before, if I gotta take a little bit of money off the top of the selling price to add it to the shipping, not a big deal. But when you are offering items like this for shipping, you have a good chances of selling them really quickly for good profit. All right, we're coming towards the end. Um, this is <laughs> just a different, unique item. I picked this up at the garage sale for 20 bucks. A lady wanted, I think, 30 or 35. I offered, offered 20. She said, go ahead and take it. It's just a, a door, cast iron door for the old furnace. Um, but people like buying things like that because they're different, they're unique, you know, people use this kind of stuff for decorations. Now this was probably about 30 pounds and you can see the dimensions here, 21 by 20. Um, it took a little bit of time to prep this and, and get it out there in the right box, but I tell you what, I think this sold like within just a couple days, you know, and we had $30 shipping on it, no problem whatsoever. So it just shows you again that if, you, if you're if willing to deal with these bulky items, uh, potential is huge. All right, here's the last item that I'm gonna show you guys. Now, this was a cutter, it's a commercial grade cutter if somebody's doing like the vinyl lettering and stuff and they need to cut you know pieces on it this is 40 inches long so it's a pretty pretty big piece heavy bulky um, this one I actually did just a local pickup because this was almost to the point that I would have to build some kind of crate for this to ship it um, and I would probably eventually end up doing it if it would sit but this sold pretty much also immediately um, and I went to Kansas City the guy who picked it up was from Wisconsin, drove to my place, picked it up and took it to the lady in Kansas City. So 
uh, I bought this in a shop it, this came in the guy brought in a bunch of different it was closing down his business and brought a bunch of different uh, commercial grade uh, equipment like this and we bought a couple pieces uh, this one I paid $50 for it not a huge profit sold for $229 uh, and it got picked up so we had we didn't have to pack or ship anything it just tells you that sometimes it's worth playing with those bigger items because the competition is not there I think there were only two or three available at the time when I was listing this so all right guys so I showed you a few here probably 12 13 items something like that but overall this month we probably sold about 40 to 50 items that were big and bulky and it's a big chunk of money if you can sell those big items I mean it brings your average up tremendously you have a lot less competition um, <clears throat> people just don't want to deal with this stuff so I would strongly consider picking up bigger items I know some of you might say Pete but I don't have room you know I'm working out of one bedroom apartment or whatever fine yes I understand that it's maybe a mistake but if you have an option to have a storage or any kind of facility or you have a garage you know if you price it right those items will move fast so it's worth picking up few a month and, and making those extra sales because there's so much less competition selling this big stuff now you also gotta ask Pete it's crazy I can't be selling this stuff because the shipping will absolutely kill me not exactly if you are only shipping USPS yes you gotta have problems it's very expensive to ship big bulky heavy stuff but if you decide that you can ship FedEx totally different ball game and I'm not gonna get into details here I'm gonna give a shout out actually to Chad Pagel on Golden Finger Picker channel go out check out he made an exceptional video the whole process step by step how you can ship through FedEx and how much money you're gonna save using FedEx for big heavy bulky items I highly recommend it go check it out it's probably about an hour hour long but it's in detail it's worth looking into it so that's what I do 99% of the time I ship everything via FedEx yes and here and there you heard me say on some of the items that it cost me a little bit more that's fine there were two or three items that it cost me less so it all averages out you know like the globe I had $49.99 shipping on and it only cost me $17 to ship so you know if I price something for 30 bucks and it cost me 36 to ship no big deal because the next item might be opposite um, but it's a huge advantage that you guys can start dealing with some bigger bulkier items and and will generate some good profit I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, I know I did showing off some of the items I think you know it's worth spending some time looking into the bigger stuff because the money is there not many people are are willing to do this um, so like I said hope you enjoyed it if you did thumbs up if you didn't well thumbs down whatever uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so till next time cheers